Coming back into the U.S. Veer at two o'clock, there will be a public boat dock there. The procedure is very easy. You go up and say, hey, I need to, to talk to the U.S. Customs. If no one's there, just pick up the phone and basically just have a video chat call with them. Make sure you provide your passport number. Very trusting way to go through customs. You just did the hardest stretch so far on this trail. You did the Missisquoi River going upstream. You did the Grand Portage. You got rewarded with Lake Mipramagog. Then you have to go upstream on the Clyde River. small river so it moves fast and again you're paddling upstream it's just full of surprises the Clyde River you have rocks you have mud or you hit a few ponds in between you have a little bit of everything the very specific section you're about to paddle is the uh, one of the largest a-ranked intermediate fens in the Northeast The water is right at the surface, and the water is carrying a lot of calcium, dissolved calcium in it. And those are the conditions that favor certain kinds of plants called sedges. So it looks like grasses, but it's really sedges. And this suite of sedges loves this kind of saturated, calcium-rich habitat. It has natural communities more typical of far northern lakes that you would see uh, way up in Quebec. And they're not so typical of the rest of New England. So it, it's a very special microhabitat, you could say. Uh, when you do get up in that narrow section, that's where some of the guidebooks are a little tricky because the river is always changing due to beaver dams and other activity. And so you may go up one channel and find it's blocked and you have to go up the other channel. The Nolhegan River Basin is a lot different than probably other parts of the trail that you paddled. It flows over, I guess a, a popular way to talk about it is an unexploded volcano. It's a big bubble of magma that never rose to the surface and came out like a volcano. It just kind of bubbled up in a chamber underground and just cooled that way. In parts of the Nulhegan, when you're paddling it, the water looks different. Sometimes it's kind of brownish or coffee color, but it's clear, you know, it doesn't look muddy. People in uh, our state government, the water quality managers in state government, think of the Nulhegan as a reference river and that means it's a standard, it's like a gold standard. They compare other rivers to the Nulhegan in looking at the water quality numbers and the kind of insect life that lives in the river and these are insects that would indicate good water quality and they'll look at those aspects of the Nulhegan and compare other rivers to it to say are these as good as the Nulhegan? How close can they get to the Nulhegan numbers? So it's a reference river that way. Once you leave the Nulhegan River, you will enter into New Hampshire. <laughs>